So did anybody like to start? Connie, are you sort of raising your hand? Yeah, I'll say, okay. I, okay, I would don't. You, would you introduce I, yourself before you? Um, uh, I'm Connie Riggs. I live down in the village district. Um, and I just wanted to commend you all for what a, I was very impressed with the plan. I learned so much about the town from reading it. And um, I mean, I just think you did a good job and I tend to agree with the plan. So I just came to support the plan and also to see what other towns people thought of it. Thank you. Those are wonderful words to hear. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. There will be, um, once the plan finishes, the, um, the next frontier will be to uh, pursue village center designation, which you may be interested in working on that task force, you know, regarding your, your proximity to the village and an energy task force. And so those will be citizen based and, um, and sort of part offshoots of the planning commission. So I hope all of you think of that as, as we go forward because we'll need good input. Thank you for that. Anybody else? I'll just, uh, uh, my name's Matt Wolliver. This is Genevieve Cambron uh, with me. And uh, we're, we're on the same page as, as Connie. We just joined uh, to show support and hear comments. And thank you for all your hard work and thank the absence too. Absent. <laughs> Thanks guys. That's, that's, that's great to hear. Tony, I think it was one of the best written plans that I have seen for the town of Worcester. Uh, there was a lot of thought put into it, put into it. And uh, honestly, I can say if Meredith Prandle was involved in that, I could see where that uh, helped you out a lot. Uh, she's a smart gal. Yes. So I guess... Uh, the one thing I would probably emphasize uh, on the town plan is that it's just that it's a plan and we can look at it as being a blueprint. Blueprints can be changed and they can be moved around. Interpretations can be changed and so on. But uh, the town plan is, is just a blueprint. It's not a law. It's not binding in any way. But uh, I think uh, all of your hard work, all of your, all the team members uh, probably gave Worcester one of the best uh, town plans that I think I've ever seen, not only in Worcester, but in a, a lot of other small communities as well. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Roger. Genevieve, were you raising your hand or just waving? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that is silent clapping for meaning. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thanks, Roger. You know, I, I think I've said this before that in the process of, of putting together this plan, I have read a lot of plans in, in, um, in Vermont. And it, it sort of impressed me after a while that the plans really seemed like they reflected the town you know if the town was kind of small and rustic the the plan was kind of plain spoken and and straightforward and and maybe a little rough around the edges other towns and i'm thinking of stowe here that has a full-time planner on staff you know it's just it's it's i it's almost unreadable it's so specific and it's so perfect and it's so um everything a plan should be i guess and you know <clears throat> if this plan reflects worcester at all boy that's i will be happy with that mm 
Hi, Zach. Hey, so I'm Zach Sullivan. I'm actually the chair of the East Montpelier Planning Commission, so I don't really have a dog in this fight. Um, I did just, one comment I would make based on our own experience, I know you've got a little, a short section on you know, scenic highways and you know, the importance of Route 12. You might, you know, in addition to talking about solar and transmission lines, you might put something about telecommunications towers in there, um, you know, in that list, just because that is something that was a hot topic for us recently. Along the road line? Along the road, yeah, or, or the view from the road line. It probably won't be close to the road, but sort of thinking about that, you know, some of those views like up to the mountain. How, how did you guys handle it? Um, part of the reason I'm here is so that I can crib off of you for running one of these hearings because we got pressured <laughs> into putting an amendment to our town plan to more thoroughly deal with it. Um, the, the issue became moot because neighbors bought out the development rights. I see. Um, but we would have, we did have a scenic resources section that was what would have been the key town plan section, mm -hmm. you know, governing whether the town supported or opposed the tower proposal. Mm -hmm. So your issue was basically confined to the roadways or the sides of the roadways, not necessarily. Or, or the, the view from the roadways. I mean, we have areas where some, yeah, some, you know, uh, we have certain sections of dirt road that essentially function as public parks. You know, people come and park and then walk on those sections of road. And so it's a question of almost like, how do you, you know, how do you protect the view from something that is functionally a park? And we do actually have some of those in, in the same way that you've identified Route 12 as being a really significant scenic road. Yeah. You know, those, you know, identified by name. Okay. Thank you. That's that's great input. Did you find, uh, Zach, that um, maybe some of the input uh, that the town was giving um, is just uh, for basically like solar farms, we'll put it that way, along the roadways, but it has nothing to do with uh, residential solar systems and that they have on their houses and so on, or how'd you handle that? So we haven't dealt at all with, um, you know, with, with residential solar. I mean, it, to the ex with the exception of saying that, you know, we do, we do want people to be able to offset their own use. Um, we did have one use with one business where the business owner has converted his entire fleet of vehicles and so wanted to install enough solar capacity to charge, I think, either four or five Chevy Bolts, which is a lot of power. Um, yeah, and we ended up supporting that with, with asking for a couple of modifications for screening. Um, but no, I think we do, like we do talk about things, you, know, you talk about sort of next iteration, you know, we do talk about things like foreground versus you know, middle ground and long view, because um, the foreground is where you can start to really see details. Uh, so that's, we, we do not have an approved enhanced energy plan. Um, that's probably next on our to-do list. So our our energy section looks very, very nice and I think is very well written and would not have a whole lot of sway with the Public Utilities Commission. Thanks. Anybody else? Well, I got to chime in. Okay. Um, I think after... Um, uh, when did you all start on the town plan, rewriting it? <laughs> oh, let's see. It started in earnest, I think, when Katie came on. And so, Katie, you've been there for... 2015. When, pardon? 2015. She, she hasn't... You haven't been there for, since 2015. Katie hasn't. Yeah. Yeah? I think I oh. came in... Oh, are you talking about me, Katie? Or Katie yeah, was? now I am. Yes, I, I was. But we were getting mixed up. Yeah, we started, the two of us started in on it um, in 2020, um, maybe like sometime in the summer of 2020. Mm -hmm. And there but, have but been- But before that, there was- There I were mean, iterations the, before us, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there I were, mean, it, it's a long time and there's a, a lot of thought that has to go into it and a lot of hard work. And, and so I um, have to- Thank you for doing that work and putting, you know, trying to project into the future, like what, what we want to see the town look like um, and what's going to happen. And, and it's, it's difficult. 
um, mainly because the, we don't know what the future is going to look like. And we, we might have some control over it. Um, you know, what, what we're, what we want to see happen. Um, and I guess one of my comments would be if the, if, if the town does get the village center designation, um, and it is available for, for some funds, what, what would those funds be? And, and, you know, what, what would the, you know, what, what do you see the village center? Um, what kind of changes do you see in the village center, if any? I'll start and then I'll let other people um, chime in. I think that my view, one of the biggest advantages in my view of a village center designation is to be able to protect what we have not necessarily build something new or fancy outside. But I think that Worcester as a town has the bones of just a perfect village center, which is different than all of our, you know, Callis or Middlesex or Berlin or any many surrounding towns. We have the nice intersection of roads. We have the river running right through our town. We have beautiful green space right in the middle of our town, right in a nice cluster. We have the school and the post office and the church and the general store and the, and the cafe, you know, we have the ball field, we have the, you know, we have the soccer field. It's, it's, we have the cemetery. It's really almost perfect. And, you know, I think that we should protect that. Um, the village center designation, I think also offers some tax benefits do you know about that, Zach? Is that is that true? Yeah, so it, it offers tax benefits primarily for you know renovating and restoring historic structures. So like, I don't I don't know if if the list of places that Tony just rattled off is you know you know, would be considered historic, but if they are, you know, like say the you know, say the general store needed repairs they would have access to tax incentives that would make that cheaper for them to do. And so you're not, you're not in a situation where you're looking to use the tax incentives to get something started back up um, in the way that we are, quite frankly. Um, but, you know, you, you know, but those tax incentives would be available um, really to private businesses to help maintain what is already there. And, and we do have historic buildings and those buildings are still in, almost daily use. So uh, maintaining those would be pretty high on the list, I think. What is Katie saying here? 50% technology of... tax credits. Yeah, mm -hmm. so here, hold on. Uh, I, I just, just have, have a short list. list. Um, hold on, sorry. Should I, I'll, gonna, I'll mute, I'll mute. I'll start the video, hold on. So just a short list would be, sorry. Sounds like you're back in the 60s. Get on mute, Katie. Okay. How's that? Try it again. It's not coming from Katie. It's coming from someone else who has their mic on, most likely. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. Leave just talking, muted. just talking. All right, Mike, yeah. try this. Ready? We have a 25% facade improvement tax credit, 10% historic tax credit, 50% code improvement tax credit available up to $50,000 for elevators, sprinkler systems, the ADA um, modifications, electrical, plumbing. 
50% technology tax credit is available up to $30,000 for installation of improvements made to data and network installations, HVAC, heating, cooling, ventilations, um, priority consideration for state grants, priority consideration for state buildings and general services, and neighborhood de development area eligibilities. Um, it, the, the designation, the village designation is huge for across the board for, for additional funds. So that, that's the short list of what will come after we can apply and, and be reinstated as a, a, you know, a designated village center. So I just wanted to add that. Thanks. Thank you. So um, does anybody, oops, I better get off. Um, does anybody have any other ideas of what, um, what we should be thinking about? Although there will be much, lots of pre-work done before, before um, you know that happens. But, but any other ide village ideas? What you don't want to happen? The first thing everybody always says is no dollar store. <laughs> No dollar store, no Walmart, no zoning. Yeah. I think um, one improvement that I'd like to see personally in downtown Worcester is uh, <clears throat> some sidewalks, um, potentially right along Route 12 there. Um, I think that would go a long ways uh, to improving walkability and um, pedestrian safety. I know that uh, that had been approached uh, to the select board before, uh, and uh, there are grant dollars uh, available out there for sidewalks, but the question has always been, how are we going to pay to maintain it, to keep it clean in the wintertime, more equipment, more personnel? Uh, to get a sidewalk, you got to keep it clean when you're on Route 12 and you have state plows going up and down the road all the time. You're pretty much going to have to have somebody out there full time with storms just clearing the sidewalk. And does the town want to pay for all that? So that's always been the question and it's never been answered. Might need some creative thinking about pathways. Well, if we, if we, I understand the idea of the maintenance, but if we think of a, a cycle path, um, it would be another way to at least have a pavement, like a protected pavement calculated with a line of paint that would just be maintained the same way on the road, but at least the side would be a proper width for someone to comfortably walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that would be uh, a state right of way. They have uh, distance on either side of what is now paved, and there's a state right of way. So that may be something that could be approached uh, to the state and uh, Department of Transportation and say, you know, because of the population and because of the amount, we do have a lot of bicycles, uh, a lot of motor uh, bicycle traffic back and forth on Route 12. And it would be nice if we're in a congested area like this, if the state would put in some bike lanes on both sides is what basically what you're saying. And that would give enough room for pedestrians, but still not be having it left up to the town to maintain it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And another point, um, I, I, I don't know if it's completely, if it's mentioned in, in the plan because I haven't uh, read it. What? <laughs> completely um but i know there's a lot of uh, rule uh, concerning um lad field mm -hmm. um but and i with keeping the maintenance uh thing i have a few idea that uh but i i'm i would i would wonder if it's here that i could check in to have um answer about, uh, for example, um, if we would plant just a, a few three along 
the, the, the path that is mowed during the summer. So the walk is a little nicer. And uh, we could say it's only a native uh, three local trees that grow here, or it could be fruit tree. But I mean, when I say fruit tree, I, I know there will be like the maintenance uh, that will come in. Um, but, and I know there's, there's a lack of shadow during the 4th of July party and another light line of three. And I, I say line just for the mow, to keep it simple for the mower, because I would see a fantastic English garden. But, um, but I mean, at least it would make a row of, uh, of shadow. Maybe then the neighbor will complain about the view. I, I don't know. So it, I know it contained a lot of line, but personally, I would I would plant few trees in that big field, and maybe put a couple picnic table, which is again like another uh, who will empty the garbage. I'm aware of all the line, but <laughs> would that be an under committee or? You do such a good job of arguing with yourself. <laughs> I think I think all of those are good ideas that should we should talk through um, when when we talk about village designation. Um, it's not it doesn't make sense to get too far down that path right now but mm -hmm. it does it is time to start thinking about those kind of ideas so keep doing that i think our first <clears throat> move will be there's there's a person at in state office that that's his job is to oversee the village center designation program and so we'll invite him to a meeting and get all the details and and learn about what we need to do and, and how it would benefit or how it might not benefit us. I mean, I would admit I don't know that much about it. So we'll just look into it, but I think it's a, we'll, we'll get started. Okay, I'll, I'll write more, uh, more yeah. ideas that goes with it. Thank yeah. you. Um, I have another question, but I wanna make sure, does anybody have anything else to say about the plan? Do you want? You know, I don't want to leave any stone unturned. I want to get this approved. Well, with with the plan the way it is right now, Tony, uh, once it gets approved and it gets forwarded to the state and so on and so forth, there's nothing that says that we can't make uh, changes to that without waiting for five years. I mean, could we make changes after, you know, next year? This plan is act is actually good for eight years. Eight years, okay. They've, they've extended it. It used to be five. So I think that if we make changes to it, we do have to apply for an amendment okay. to make it, you know, recognized in the eyes of the state. Mm -hmm. But we will be doing that anyway, because if we get vis village center designation or enhanced energy plan designation, all of those our amendments to the plan. You know, those are become part of the plan and we just um, go through a, a simple review process and add that yeah. in. So there will be other opportunities to change things. We don't have to live with exactly what's written forever. Right, so I mean, and then you would just go, if you're gonna make any changes, you do the same thing, go through a public, public hearing and yeah. warning and so on and so forth yeah. and then submit it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so Tony would 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 Ladfield would that fall into the into you, you mentioned something about the town center designation? Yeah, I think so. So that because um, I, I just because Ladfield isn't really expressly um, included in the town plan at all. It's right? mentioned. It's mentioned. It's mentioned. Yeah. yeah. But it's because it, it does have its its um, its own oversee committee, right? Well, it's supposed to. Yeah. It's been reverted back to the the select board. Oh. Mm. Yeah. The that was that was all given to the town with some caveats in there and so on and so forth. So there may be some things that we think would be a great idea for that area, but it may not mix with. Uh, how it was uh, given to the town and, and kind of the instructions they gave on how we're supposed to treat it, you know, and, so. And it's also conserved, right, by the land trust, or is that only the other part of the field? 
I don't know how far the land trust goes there. The land trust? Mm -hmm. um, I think, I'm, I'm not sure. How, I think that <clears throat> the land trust, conserved by the land trust? Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. I, I guess it would be the whole, it, I guess it would be the whole thing, but you know it, the land was granted to the town mm -hmm. under certain under certain um, stipulations yeah. or caveats. And um, I don't know. It, it might be the type I wonder is, is that something that would be a, a, a worthwhile appendix to put in the town plan? And to put what what would be what would we add? what would we add? Uh, just basically the 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 um, so right now Ladfield the, the whole recreation area has its own policies and rules that were oh, established by the recreation committee. Um, probably, I want to say like maybe six seven years ago, and then before that there was the there's basically the the legal document that explains um who granted ladfield to the town and what the what the guidelines are for its use um and something like that would be would be helpful um yeah. for for people that um, have a vision on what they'd like to see that area look like. Um, it would help give them some some guidance. Okay. So you're thinking, uh, Ted, before this plan gets uh, uh, submitted, that maybe we add that little caveat in there someplace about uh, so that we have it in the town plan now. And it'll be good for the next eight years, but that'll give us uh, a, a way to work with the recreation committee and with other people so that everybody recognizes in the town plan that we have this land, but there are some caveats uh, connected with it. And, and those things would need to be reviewed before anything could be done. Yeah, I mean, and it's, it's a significant part of the town for sure. Uh, yeah, you're right. And and a valuable part, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll look into that. If there's no more comments, Ted, I I kind of just want to stay a few minutes more in case anybody else shows up. But do you want to take this opportunity of these excellent planners present here tonight to run some ARPA ideas across? Oh. Or is that premature? Uh, was was were you directing that question at me? Yeah, I was. Yeah. ARPA funds. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, I don't know if everybody knows what ARPA funds are, but um, they're just monies that have been given to the state by the federal government, and this and they're they've been given to the towns, individual towns, and. The monies can be used for. Um, they're all they're they're for they're they're for mitigation of COVID related um, COVID related um, incidences, and the funds can be used for um, for. I wrote them down. You want me to read them? Yeah, I think one one is economic for for basically reimbursement of loss of economic funds. The second one is providing um, frontline workers with premium pay or hazard pay. The third one is for loss of governmental funds, um, and then the the fourth one, which is I think draws the most attention, is to rebuild or for improvements in in municipal infrastructure, um, water and sewer and broadband. Big one is broadband. So, um, and the select board, we've been approached by the town water um, 
Commission, and then we've also been approached by CV Fiber. And um, other than that, we don't have a lot of other ideas on, well, we ha do have ideas on what to do with it, but we are definitely looking for other ideas on, on how to spend some of these funds. I think we've uh, kicked around some ideas of some of the funds for the town hall, maybe for ventilation, uh, you know, because uh, the town hall is used for the food bank and so on. And uh, there's a lot of public traffic back and forth through there. And at the height of the pandemic, there were people that were having to stand outside in the middle of the winter before they could file in one at a time or something like that into the town hall for for the food bank so you know there could be there's been some talk about maybe using some of that funds to improve the town hall which serves the entire town um but there's been uh, other discussions we have some issues with the fire department floor that uh, we need to address maybe there's money there through the recovery plan as well um, but it's it's still in the discussion plan and we've also ted has suggested too that we just hold public hearings about this but we wanted to get our ducks in a row and say here's the money here's the things that we can spend it on what do you want us to spend it on and get town input on it rather than just having the three select board members say well this is good let's do that so um that's i think where we're where we're at now but uh, some of that money could definitely um like the historical society tony yep. that would be uh, of course that's nonprofit and so on and so forth but that would be another building historical yep. building in the town yeah okay you know one thing that i um think sort of figures into that kind of planning that was for me a learning uh, as part of this de plan development is that Worcester is getting younger and dramatically so while the rest of, I think in all over Vermont, the, um, the, the tier, the age tier that has the most people in it is 45 to 55. And for the rest of the state, the second biggest tier is 55 to 65, getting older. In Worcester, the second biggest tier is 35 to 45. Mm. So, you know, that that um, is worth thinking about as we think about the future and what kind of services we're going to need in town and and so forth. Let's go in there. <laughs> We want to hear from him. That's right. I am one of those people. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just, I was thinking that, yeah. Yeah, I, well, I think, um, so from the perspective of like the planning, being on the planning commission and, and reading through the feedback um, from a survey in 2019, there's definitely um, a lot of desire for Worcester to generally keep the feel and like look the same while in increasing community engagement and just a lot of um like we already have a lot of great community engagement but um i definitely saw a focus on that and also a focus on wanting better internet you know like having you know just just improving the infrastructure there um but as someone who runs a business in worcester having better internet and um, putting funds towards reliable, high-speed internet would be amazing. Because um, even though we run a farm, we are emailing and we're advertising. We use our website. Like we really do, you know, even our bookkeeping is online. So um, that would be a huge one. And I think it does help attract families and um yeah, so that that I would vote for putting ARPA funds towards um, broadband, um, and I think that's the biggest one for me. Yeah. But I also really love the idea of ventilation in the town hall. Um, 
that would be great because we, you know, we've loved working with the food shelf and the Wednesday lunches when they happen. Um, and even having, you know, occasional music nights or different community functions there. It's definitely a really special spot in Worcester. That would be great to be able to have it opened up again. Um, so yeah, I love that idea. Well, um, Katie, we've already put, um, we've pledged $50,000 to CB Fiber. And right now what they're, their, their first phase is their, their, um, uh, I think the first phase that they're working on is, is accessing the underserved, um, houses in Worcester. So it's people at the end of roads, basically, which I think would be, might, might include you, but it's, it's kind of a, it's a large number of, of people, um, that don't have that access. Um, but it seems like it's still a long ways out. And, um, but I was encouraged to hear that the state received a bunch from the, the recent um, infrastructure bill that just got passed. Um, I think the state received some, but I, I want to say I heard a number of like $100 million and I think the CV fiber project, they're, they're estimating they're going to need $50 million. So I hope it was more than $100 million because it's going to cost a lot of money. So does it seem like we've solved all the problems that we're capable of solving tonight? I had one more comment, if I may. Yeah. Sure. Um, I went to, I did an, a webinar with the Vermont City, whatever it is, League of Cities and Towns, and they were talking about the state ARPA funds, um, like what, which is different than the municipal funds that Worcester has. And um, I was just listening on behalf of the water district, but what I heard that I thought was relevant to Worcester is some of those state funds are available for, for upgrading septic systems that are endangering waterways. So for, especially with like low income people um, or households. So I just didn't know, you know, I swim in Minister Brook and periodically a whole bunch of soap bubbles comes down as if somebody's dishwasher or laundry washing machine is outletting into the brook. And I thought, if we could, it might be worth advertising that because then the state will come, I mean, the state will then dedicate some of their ARPA funds to people who need septic upgrades to protect the waterways. So just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> Good, thanks, thanks. So you'll be hearing from us in the future about um, we'll be beating the bushes looking for uh, citizen participation in um, village center designation and then also eventually energy. So um, please consider all of those things and um, talk to your friends about them. But for tonight, for now, not tonight, um, if that's everything, could I have a motion to adjourn this public hearing? I'll move to adjourn. Okay, from Ted, I'll second. second. I'll second. Roger, I'll Roger, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Public hearing adjourned.